right. So we were talking about spinal pain earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, generally neck pain, back pain, shoulders, ribs, you know, that type of stuff. All that stuff kind of included um, pelvis, you know, hips, those types of things. Bursitis, you know, uh, and joints, disc injuries, these types of things, um, facet injuries, muscle strains, sprains, chronic or acute issues, those types of things. Um, really important, and we're talking about uh, what we do here, which is hyperbaric oxygen therapy, uh, in one of the types of treatments that we do, that's really helpful for healing these types of things. And we also have a physical therapy practice, so we, we apply it there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're able to use this really cool treatment technique to help people who have, you know, some things acutely, just get better, recover faster. And for some people that are just not getting the kind of results they need from, from their typical uh, treatments, this can be a really great way for them to maybe get over that, um, that hump, that, that limitation, whatever it might be. Uh, and usually in the case of, of these types of things, it's either inflama inflammation, uh, swelling, uh, chronically, uh, you're not getting enough oxygen to the tissues to heal and those types of things. So what we can do is we get to use something called hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And what hyperbaric oxygen therapy is, is it's oxygen under pressure. And why that's really important is because when we have oxygen under pressure, it allows more oxygen to get into our bloodstream or into the fluid of our blood and deliver to these areas of injury to heal them. So when we look at the lungs and we have oxygen coming in from breathing, what happens is oxygen doesn't just, you know, miraculously get into our, you know, bloodstream. What it has to do is it has to diffuse in through our, into our blood vessels. So here's a blood vessel, oxygen gets in and it gets distributed. So it gets distributed to wherever it might go. Let's say, let's say your problem is you have chronic uh, low back pain or, or bursitis or sciatica or disc injury, right? So we're going to the low back here, generally. And so we wanna get oxygen to these areas. But what we were talking about earlier, which is really important, is that we do have some limitations for getting oxygen to these areas. And one is if there's inflammation and there's constriction of blood vessels, as we're trying to mitigate that inflammation, there's also that red blood cells are carrying oxygen and they are limited. We have only a certain amount of those. So there's only a certain amount of red blood cells and how far can they get in the tissue or how far can they reach? So when we're healing, we need to heal inflammation and we need to get oxygen to these cells because oxygen to the cells creates ATP or energy that allows us to heal. That's how things heal. They need oxygen and they're carried through blood vessels by our blood cells. Now these little oxygen molecules, they're tinier, they're much smaller. And the each red blood cell can carry four oxygen molecules. Only, only four, up to four. But like we said, we're limited by red blood cells. Are the blood flow, circulation, all these different things. So, you know, we wanna talk about circulation. Here's one of our limitations potentially. So, what hyperbaric does is when we go under pressure, oxygen is transferred from a gas to a liquid form. And it also shrinks a little bit. So what happens with that is now we don't need these big red blood cells, if you will, to carry oxygen. Now oxygen just floats around in our plasma or the fluid of our blood and gets and saturates these tissues and gets in further, has farther reach in the tissue surrounding it to deliver oxygen so that we can heal. Now it's important, we were talking about this earlier, 
it's important to understand that how oxygen really gets into tissues, right? If our, our blood vessels, we don't have blood vessels covering every aspect of our body. We have blood vessels in a lot of our body, but it's relying on the oxygen molecules to kind of diffuse through a little bit and to travel on their own. But if we have these blood vessels and they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller into these little capillaries, then we get even more constriction because of inflammation and those types of things, then our, our uh, red blood cells, which I do in a different color here, may not be able to get all the way to where we want them to. So their reach may be limited for whatever reason. And so if we can increase that reach or increase the amount of oxygen to these tissues another way, that would be ideal. And that would allow them to heal or get over that hump or that reason that they're not healing. And that is through that hyperbaric because it, that oxygen molecule, those oxygen molecules are really tiny. And what they do is they get further in and they can get to that tissue and they can also reach further. So now, and they don't care about inflammation <laughs> because they can do all this stuff. Now, the vasoconstriction that we talk about is actually important. So when we talk about treating things, sometimes people aren't doing this very well, they're not do, they, they may not be getting that vasoconstriction happening. So the hyperbaric actually allows that vasoconstriction or the constriction of blood vessels, which normally I, I talk about not being helpful, but when you do it with hyperbaric, the, you, get, you still get a huge increase in oxygen, which allows the healing to occur. If I just did the vasoconstriction without the oxygen, that wouldn't do that very well. Right. And so that's where inflammation and some of the other things come into play. So we need to heal the inflammation, which hyperbaric does very well, but we also need to get oxygen to it and reduce the amount of fluid that's occurring and increase the, the, the uh, detoxification or the lymphatic flow, which is the other things that the hyperbaric does. Is the hyperbaric increases fluid dynamics. So it increases fluid flow or blood flow in general. So it pushes more blood and fluid to different areas. So that it increases lymphatic flow. So that's detoxification. It increases cerebral spinal fluid as well, which allows our spine and, you know, it's what it's the fluid that bathes our spinal cord and our brain. So increasing cerebral spinal fluid takes, removes waste and toxins from our system, and it also delivers better nutrients. So that would help heal, let's say, a spinal injury or brain, right? really important. And in the sense of our discs, this is even more important for people who have disc herniations. Discs don't have a good blood supply. So if, I, if you look at a disc, which is a disc is between two vertebrae, right? So this is the disc. And if I looked at that from a bird's eye view right down my spine, you know, it, it we're going to draw it just kind of like this. It, has, it looks a little different than that. But it only gets blood flow to the outer one third. So it's really only out here where we get blood flow. This inner part is kind of devoid of oxygen, but what it does is through movement of the, of the uh, disc, it actually pumps oxygen in. It pushes it in, kind of like hyperbaric does. So discs can heal, but they need that type of movement and uh, activity to push through. That's why a chiropractor and a physical therapist are so important for disc injuries because they start to get that those joints moving so that disc can receive the oxygen and other nutrients, not just, you know, not just oxygen, but other nutrients. It needs to heal. And then as it heals, it's able to cleave off the, um, you know, the, the bulge or the herniation and then your microphages your, uh, your white blood cells, they eat it away. They basically just take it down. Um, but if we use hyperbaric with this, that can really improve that healing and that nutrient delivery and allow that disc to heal. Not to mention if we do other things that, you know, for treatment, that can really improve that. For people with chronic disc injuries or, um, you know, herniations and these types of things, hyperbaric can be really helpful for that whether in the low back or the neck, the discs are throughout the entire spine. Mm -hmm. So super important to realize. Um, yeah. Is there anything else that I wanted to cover on that? I think that's 
Yeah, I think it does. Uh, you know, acute injuries, you know, the knee, it really works the same way in the knee and the, the, the bursitis of the knee or the mm -hmm. hips or those types of things. It really works well. We've seen it a lot for people and, and uh, I encourage people to check it out if they have things that aren't responding to your typical rehab and therapies. Right. Yeah.